So before we get into the video today, at the end of the video there will be an opportunity for you to download a free underwater preset created by me, um, but you will have to stay watching until the end to find out just how to do that. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is good and having a great time in lockdown. We are still locked down here in London, in the UK. Um, it has eased up a bit, but I still have buckets of time because I'm furloughed. And one of the things that I'm cracking on with again, in addition to Ocean Body, which is my podcast, is this. And I thought, why not record another underwater editing video tutorial. In the last video I did basic underwater corrections, so I took a couple of photos and um, showed you how I edit them for just a basic correction. Anyway, in today's video I wanted to go a step on from that and um, show you how to use something that I use in all my, not in my photos, but in loads of my photos, and that is graduated filters. So as you can see from, oh, this gorgeous drone shot behind me um, that was shot by um, Fari, who is one of the rangers out in Bar Atoll in the Maldives, who I met earlier this year. I then edited with graduated filters this photo, I'll pop it here, that I got really amazing feedback on from Instagram. So I'm going to try and recreate that today for you. I'm one of those people that literally never creates the same edit twice, so it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. But I'm going to talk you through my process and what I do. Um, so yeah. One eternity later. Plot twist. Yeah, I know my glasses are wonky. The other ones are fully broken. Um, this is Mad from the future. I just finished recording the entire thing um, and then the screen recording didn't save so now I have all the audio and a video of me talking with no video of the screen. So take two, I'm gonna edit again. Let's go, bye! I think the screen recording failed me and didn't work so I now feel super sad about that but I'm going to do it again and probably more speedy now because, you know, I've already done it once. So um, the first thing I'm going to do on my image is um, adjust the crop. Um, so I'm going to adjust my crop like so. Uh, I think I had it as a square on the Instagram post playing that two thirds, one third feature. Perfect, okay. What I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to essentially create a blank canvas first. Um, so almost like a base layer. Um, so I'm actually not going to adjust my light settings yet. I'm going to go in and adjust the white balance. Um, so I'm going to try and essentially make everything that's underneath fairly neutral. Um, so I'm just going to take the tone the temperature down slightly, sorry, and the tint up. Oh, that's probably a bit far. And then I'm going to come all the way down here to our HSL panel, and I'm going to, um, let's start off with the hue. Um, so I'm going to take the aqua up towards blue, and I'm going to take the blue down towards aqua slightly. Um, so as you can see, I've got this almost kind of, I feel like it's kind of a bluey grey going on which now is coating the background. Um, then I'm going to move across to saturation, again take the blue down slightly so more of that kind of grey tone and the aqua up slightly so saturate the aqua slightly more. Um, and then finally I'm going to come across the luminance um, and I'm going to take the aqua up, maybe not that far and the blue down slightly, there we go. So now as you can see we have like a very neutral base to work with. It kind of seems like the opposite of what you want to do in an underwater photo because normally you're putting colour back into the photo whereas here I'm kind of making everything try and look the same tone. So next um, might as well work our way back up. I'm going to go to the tone curve here 
Um, I'm going to add a little bit of contrast by taking the shadows and the darks down slightly. Take the lights and the highlights up slightly. Then I'm going to come up here to our wonderful light panel. Um, I'm going to take the highlights down here slightly, the shadows up slightly. I'm going to leave the white. Just going to adjust those like that. Very minor difference. Um, then I'm going to add the teeniest bit of texture and the teeniest bit of clarity. And then um, what we're going to do here with the vibrance and the saturation again is I'm going to take the saturation down, but the vibrance up a tiny bit. Um, so I will come back and probably adjust some more of these settings later. Um, but this is the kind of base that I'm looking to work with, this very neutral, aquary, grey kind of hue. So now the fun part starts and this is the graduate, gradual, is it graduated or gradual filters? Uh, I'm going to call them gradual filters. So if you come up here to this little rectangle here, this is the gradual filters um, toggle button. So if you select that, you'll get this little plus shaped thing come up and what you do is click and drag and you'll see kind of opening, opening, opening like a fan is this graduated filter. So this little button down here, which says show selected mask overlay, uh, this is why it's showing up red now. This button, if you toggle it off and on, it basically allows you to see exactly where your filter is lying um, and how it will how it will work on the image. So as it says, this is a filter. So it's an overlay on top of your image. And at the moment, as you can see, it's covering um, part of my image. If you drag this line over here, it will extend it across like this. And obviously the further you go to the left, the more gradual it is. And if you wanted to move the base of it, you can also move from the center like that. So if you want a denser filter and a kind of more immediate contrast as well, you can drag it right back down like this and it kind of concertinas it and it becomes very dense. So now you see that this line of the filter is actually very hard. Um, so for obviously today, I want a very gradual going from light sweeping across to dark kind of look um, that I use in quite a lot of my edits. So I'm going to pull this back. Um, probably to about here. As you can see, I've got it on a very gradual kind of setting. And I'm now going to turn the selective mask overlay off because um, I kind of know where it's placed at the moment. We can always come back and adjust that again later. So for um, this side, I think in the edit that I had on Instagram, um, I had the, the light side coming in from the right hand side. So what I'm going to do to create that light side of the image is I'm going to increase the light on the side. So firstly, I'm going to take up my exposure, uh, probably take it up to about 1.2, about there. That looks okay. Um, I'll take up my highlights a bit as well. Um, and then I'll finally even increase the whites. Now there's also another way to get a lot more light into the corner of this image and that is by going down here to the dehaze tool. So with the dehaze if you take it this way it adds contrast that's very dark and if you take it this way it adds a lot of light. Now obviously this is far too dramatic for what I want so I'm just going to add a little bit like this and then I'm going to add a little bit of clarity on top and I like to go back in and add a little bit of texture as well. Okay, perfect. So next thing to do, I'm going to go across here and take a, another one of these graduated filters. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this on the other side. I'm going to show you on the selective mask overlay so you can see where this one's placed as well. Um, so just move this. Actually, it's probably too dense for me. Um, great. And then what we're going to do on this side is essentially the reverse of the other side. So I'm going to take the exposure down. A bit more kind of about the same ratios the exposure went up. 
Um, I'm going to take the shadows down and I'm going to also pop the blacks down as well. Oh, and I'm going to add a tiny bit of texture, a tiny bit of clarity, just fun. So as you can see now, we've kind of got our gradual filters effect. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come just back down here to the uh, to the color panel here, and I am going to take the aqua slightly more towards the blue hue. There we go. And now you can just adjust that as you see fit. I think for me it was a little bit too aqua, so I was just bringing it more, slightly more into the blue. Um, so now you're probably looking at this and thinking, wow, great edit, but why does my little swimmer guy, aka me, not look how he is supposed to look? Now I'm going to show you how I am going to return the skin tones and the skin colors back into the image. So there are a few ways you can do this, but my favorite one is to go over here and grab the brush tool. So if you grab the brush tool here, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that the flow, which is this one here, is on 100%. I usually keep the feather about here. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is zoom, 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 zoom in, and then basically go to town and start, oh, useful again if you use the selected mask overlay comes out in red so you can see where you're selecting so what you're going to do now is select the whole person till you have selected the entire person like so then we can get rid of the selected mask overlay i don't know if you can hear it in the background but my laptop is massively overheating so what i'm going to do first is um change the white balance so in order to counteract the slight green i'm going to up the pink and in order to counteract the blue i'm going to up the yellow and as you can see already we have some skin color returning to our little swimmer aka me i don't know why i keep calling myself the little swimmer um this was actually a really fun day out in the ocean tess and i were out tess is my friend um obviously not just some rando uh we were out in raja ampat and playing around in the ocean and it was amazing um the leggings are from new wave store by the way so i'll drop the link down below in case you're interested and the sports bar as well it's a matching set um and yeah it was a really fun day so anyway as you can see here i have adjusted the white balance uh manually to kind of find something that looks pretty skin colored to me now I think I look a bit pale, so I'm going to add a little bit of colour. Actually, this is great here. It's already on H31. I know I used something around 30 last time. And then I'm just kind of going to increase the saturation here. So H31 is the positioning on, like, if you imagine lines this way. And so it's here. I've selected the kind of orangey red. And then saturation here depends on how saturated that color is obviously that's too saturated so i'm just kind of going to play around with it if this is none um until i feel like my little person aka me is warm enough um so i think i'm going to go into about let's see how that looks uh let's go with that for now 37 um and then we'll come out of there and we'll go into adjusting the light settings on our little person Oh my God, why do I keep calling myself that? Um, on me, the swimmer. And then, so firstly, I'm going to in increase the contrast um, by quite a lot, because I think it looks really dramatic and great. Um, and that's what I did in the last photo. Then the next thing I'm going to do is take the shadows down slightly as well. Again, that in increases that dramatic kind of contrast look. Then I'm going to add a little bit of clarity. Do this just by eye. An increase in clarity brings out the texture and the detail and photos that have like quite a lot of texture. So for example, I want my, my swimmer, me, to be the forefront of the image. So I always feel like by adding a little bit of clarity, it definitely kind of brings the, the person or the center of the image to the forefront. 
Um, and then maybe just a smidge of dehaze, though sometimes that's too dramatic. Um, so yeah, that is how I usually would restore um, the skin colour to a person when I've used graduated filters. Um, there are other ways you can do it, but this is the one that I most often use for things like this. Um, so now I'm just going to go back down and I think I'm just going to adjust the blues in this image slightly as well. Um, so I think I might bring the blue back up just a smidge to make that more blue. And I think that is probably pretty similar to what I put on my Instagram the other day. So yeah, that is a basic overview on how to very simply use graduated filters in your underwater image to give it that from light right through to dark effect um, with those gorgeous aquary blue hues. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today and I hope that you learned something. Uh, let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. And if you would like to download my free underwater preset, all you have to do is head over to my website, newwave.store. I will link it down below, n-u-w-a-v-e dot store. Um, and sign up to my mailing list to receive a free underwater preset, um, which hopefully will help you in your editing journey. Ta -da. Anyway guys, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps to support my channel. Oh,